Hi, welcome back to the third part of this 3DS Max 2020 uh, rendered perspective section uh, tutorials. Um, I've done a rendering here that I set to, to render for 15 minutes, uh, getting as close as it could to the high quality level, so 15 minutes isn't long. Uh, I also actually increased the size of this to 1500 pixels by 1500, so it's a reasonably good size. It's quite dark in the back here, um, and you know that could be dealt with in Photoshop later on. But remember, you know any any exposure changes that you do make, you've got to do it to all the other versions of the of the 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 different times of the day, different times of the year. Okay, so that, that's ready to, to open in Photoshop. Uh, I rendered that to a TIFF file intentionally so that I could get access to the alpha channel. Uh, if you want to see the alpha channel in the file, then you can see it here. So anything that's solid or semi-transparent will either be white or shades of grey. Uh, this is really handy for, for kind of doing using as a cutouts or masks in Photoshop. Okay, so I'm just going to close the close the render, and I'm going to put in uh, also a section here that I can then export. Now I find this section tool a bit awkward to control. I have to admit, um, it's not the most intuitive object. So what we'll do is we'll place the section in the left view, and then we can move it in the uh, front or the top view. So we want to add to the scene. It's to do with shapes, so you'll find the section tool on there. Okay, and what you do is you click, and clicking in the middle and then dragging out, and this is the, the extent of the, the section maker. So it's covering the whole model. Okay, I don't want to create a shape just now. Okay, I want to move it first if I can. So I've got the move tool and instead of using the gizmo, I'll try and use the gizmo. Yeah, okay, gizmo's working now. Let's put this to uh, let's put the perspective view here to wireframe so we can hopefully see where the section is occurring. Uh, you, see, you can see it here, there's a yellow shape appearing there. So if I move that you can see the section running backwards and forwards and as long as I don't take the section through the person that's in the model or through the through the beams here then actually the section should be the same shape all the way so I'm going to leave it just about here uh, modify that and I want to create the shape now okay and I'll just let it go with the name that it wants to put in itself so okay that Okay, I've finished moving the section tool. Uh, I'm going to find that shape that's just been collected, selected, created, I should say, and I'll move it to the side so you can see, so you can see it. That's the section. Where are you? Come here. So shape OK. There we go. There's the section. Just going on that view. Okay, and then you know if you want to you can move the section plane, get a different section wherever you need. So I'm going to export this to AutoCAD so I can uh, modify it. That's strange. The uh, the model that came in didn't have the modifications that I'd made to it, but uh, I'd made this ledge a bit bigger, but not to fear, not to fear. Okay, so we want to click on the click on the shape. Uh, it's looking pretty clean at the moment. It's not really going to need any editing, I don't think. And I want to file, export, selected. Okay, I want to save it as a DWG, and I'll put it in with the rest of the folder. Just to keep things tidy. Okay, I'm going to save over this section here. Replace it. Yes. Uh, fairly old version of AutoCAD DWG, that's okay. It's taking the selected objects. 
these geometry options they're all okay we'll just accept that okay and now I need to open that in AutoCAD so here's section 01 just been created let's have a look at this Okay, well, I saved that as a, that was a 2013 drawing. So that would be you could import that into Illustrator as well if you want to to go via Illustrator into Photoshop. It gives you a few more options with the shape. Okay, let's have a look at the uh, at this, and I'm going to make the make the coordinates here sit in the same orientation as as my kind of rendered view. So that would be the right UCS, the right coordinate system. And then plan, return twice. Okay. Each of these are uh, nicely sealed shapes. Okay. The model was drawn fairly cleanly, so there's nothing here that needs edited. Okay. And they're polylines already, so I don't need to, to join them together at all. But the colour of them is a bit awkward, so it's, it's changed my layer zero colour to blue. Okay, this is just auto, just 3D Studio being a bit awkward. So I'm going to put zero back to colour seven, and then check the colour of these objects. Okay, so it's given them a, a random colour as well. So I'm going to make those coloured by layer. Okay, because they're on layer zero. Let's have them black. Okay, if I want to beef up these lines, this is the time to do it. So using the pedit command, PE, enter, I want to do multiple objects. So I grab everything, enter, I want to change the width of the lines. And remember this is this is at life size, okay? So maybe 50 millimeters for the lines. Oops, that's 50 meters. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> so it's life size in meters, so I need 0 0.05. So it's width 0 0.05. There we go. So we've got a nice, thick, chunky line around everything. Okay, if I wanted to, I could hatch that here, but I'll just take that through. To Photoshop now so we need to set that up as a layout okay and reasonably big so we get fairly high resolution so page setup I'm going to make it um, a3 don't need a pen setup pens for this I do need to save it as a PDF though okay Okay, I'm going to make the viewport bigger than the piece of paper this time. Don't normally do this. Okay, just and then go into the viewport and just make this as big as possible to fit inside. So zoom in so we get the biggest, clearest, sharpest lines. And double click outside, plot. this file. I'm going to save it over this one already. Okay, I may as well rotate it before it goes into Photoshop, save myself a couple of seconds. So I'll rotate the page, save that. Okay, finish with AutoCAD just now. Actually finished with 3D Studio, so let's save this. Let's save over this one. Okay, just kill off the software, it's less strain on the machine. Okay, don't need to keep these open just now. 
say that. And we want to open the render now and the uh, Summer sources have gone and lost my file now, haven't I? So let's just see. If I search drive C for summer. pause for a second till I find the file. Okay, tracked it down. I'd accidentally saved it into 3D Studio's render output folder. Okay, so here we have it here. The uh, summer solstice 10.30am.tiff. Okay, so let's open that. Okay, so if I look at the channels, you can see we have an alpha channel available. Can turn that into a selection, go back to RGB and layers, and create a new layer, okay, and then if I do the inverse, if I select the inverse, I could color inside that area, flip that so I get white, and use the paint bucket, okay, it's a really handy thing having that channel built in. Okay, select and deselect. So I could show it with or without the background then. Okay, we want to open the PDF. So section lines PDF. Okay, keep the quality up. I'll use colour even though it's just black and white in there. Okay, so you can see the lines are floating already and what we can do is send that layer, if I rename it, let's call it the lines, okay, if you right click a layer you can duplicate it to a different file, duplicate this to summer solstice, okay, so that layer has arrived, okay, we can see it here, Okay, it's huge at the moment, we need to scale it down, edit, transform, scale, okay, let's get it around about the right size, but a little bit bigger, keeping it a little bit bigger at the moment, okay, and we'll invert that, so we can see the white lines, so it's image, so when I was scaling that, I, I held the shift key to make sure it stayed proportional. Okay, so it's, we want to go image, adjustments, invert. Okay, let's hide the, uh, the background so you can see it now. So you get the idea, so it's, it's a nice kind of crisp uh, line around the, the section now. Okay. Um, this corner might be a good one to, to anchor with. Okay, so we'll try and place that as accurately as we can by eye. And if we shift, if we stretch, scale down on this corner, we should be able to get this pretty accurate. Remember, it's a graphic, it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, that's looking good, let's just check around. Okay, looks 
to be there, it's still ok on this corner yeah, like that that looks ok at the top, I think that we're ok ok so I hit the tick and that's the graphic finished, so you know, that, those lines there are you can either have them on or off, or you could fill them with a different colour, we could fill them with white if we wanted to do that a couple of times just to, to merge it properly get the idea, it's much more editable then um, yeah, if you wanted to keep those really thin then obviously that's done in AutoCAD um, it wouldn't look quite so much like a like a highlight then Okay, so I hope that's been useful. Uh, I mentioned earlier on about the uh, exposure, so I could adjust the exposure here. But remember to, to use, do, do the same amount for each image to make it a bit more visible. Remember to use the same numbers for each version of your image. Okay, thank you and goodbye.